Hi, everybody. Welcome in. It is that time. We're about ready to start the high school football season. This is your Fort Bend ISD preview on VitefortBend.com. And let's start at the top of the alphabet. The Austin Bulldogs, Mike Arabonlo. His last name starts with A, and it's his third season. And Coach Arabonlo, let's talk about your Bulldogs. I've seen many seasons where they'll go into maybe the, the week of Halloween or even the, la the first week of November with an opportunity to get into the playoffs. You haven't quite gotten there, but what are the things that can put you over the top here in 2021? Well, first, I was just thank you, Roger, for coming in and interviewing us and sh shedding some light to our program. Um, we're fired up about this upcoming season, and kind of what you said, we've always been right there, you know. And uh, when it came down to it, we fell short short the fir my first year in '19 by a couple of points, and then last year, you know, uh, injury here and uh, you know, COVID situation here that just kind of kept us from, from getting where we want to. So we are fired up this year about uh, we kind of shored up, you know, making sure kids really understood what we're expecting. You know, I was hired in June of 19, so this is actually my first spring uh, with our kids because we had COVID uh, after my first year. So uh, our kids understand a little bit more what, we're, what they're expected, you know, what we expect from them and uh, what our program's about. Uh, so this year, a lot of things were, were just kind of harped on discipline, hard work, and the, de the details, the little things, you know, and that's kind of what's kept us from reaching our goals in the past. We're talking with Mike Arabonlo of the Austin Bulldogs, and one of the things that uh, makes me an occasional sportscaster, you a coach, I look at things that maybe don't have significance, but sometimes you look at something and it's a little bit different. And sometimes I think change can be a good thing. And I noticed that your players are wearing red helmets this year instead of the black that they have had for, I don't know, it seems like at least a decade. Um, what led to that change? Well, honestly, a lot of it is just inspired by exactly what you said. Just wanting to change things, change our mentality, change our appearance. You know, we changed our jerseys. We changed uh, a lot of us just to try to get, find an edge uh, that our players felt like, you know, uh, that change brought to them. A lot of them are excited about the, the, the color change. Uh, I know black has been a tradition here, uh, and, and we plan to bring that back as well and possibly have two helmets. But for right now, this year, we're wearing red, and, and a lot of our players are fired up about it. And one thing I noticed in, in a workout in the gym, you got players that don't have numbers on their jerseys. They don't have athletic tape across the front of the helmet telling you who they are, <laughs> despite the fact that you haven't had as many springs as you wanted and, and workouts as you you would want. You know who your guys are. You don't have to put tape with their names on the helmet. Well, one one positive out of COVID is is the Zoom time. You know, spending a lot of time online with our players and getting to really know them beyond just the game. Um, so we do know our players compared to my first year where we had tape on their helmets and uh, we, we know who they are and we know what they can do. We know their strengths and it allows us to coach them and put them in the best situations, uh, you know, just so they can be successful. Now, one thing that uh, I have to admit, we always talk too much about quarterbacks. They get too much credit when things go right, too much blame when things go wrong. But Braden Aboud is a very interesting story to me. When he was a sophomore, he kind of got the keys to the program. He did well at times, but he had his growing pains. And, of course, last year was one big pain in many ways for, for everybody who had to deal with COVID. But here he is. He's persevered. And it's pretty much his team to quarterback in 2020. 2021 am i right you're correct i mean he he understands everything and he embodies our whole uh you know what our program our core values are about you know and beyond his play on the field uh he's a leader he works hard he's here every day in the summer he you know he's there leading the team uh so we're excited about his progress he understands now you know he had grown pains as a sophomore having to learn the system a brand new system in the summertime and now he's teaching other players, and that's exciting to see when he's leading the team that way. Uh, so he has full reign, and he'll, you know, a lot of times he'll check plays at the line of scrimmage because he understands what we're trying to get to. So we're we're excited about his senior year. And I think I heard one of your assistants talking about the offensive line and it being a real asset. How do you feel about your O line? 
you know, uh, our offensive line is one that that we're extremely um, excited about and and proud of in, in a short amount of time. Um, no, a line with no seniors on it, which is a first first for me. Um, you know, our team is very young. You know, nine seniors out of you know 40, 40 players. You know, so uh, we have a lot of returns and and we're just excited about a line that can play together for two or three years together and be so smart and come this far after just one scrimmage you know so so with a good o-line and braden abood with plenty of experience knowing what he's doing who are the weapons he's going to try to get the ball to well braden will be you know uh obviously throwing you your hair a lot of uh jamal uh I just blank. It happens. Uh, it's all right. On, on Jamal, um, <laughs> I'm still blank. He's the great ones. Don't need more than one name. Let's just keep going. Um, <laughs> Daniel Loso will be on the other side. Um, you know, also Hampton Phillips. Uh, those are his receivers. Luke Weaver. Which would be our senior. He's our hybrid, he's a receiver and running back. Um, you know, and also he'd be throwing the Tucson Gibbs, our, 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 our running back. So, he's, who, which one is the one with the really big hands? The wide out. Uh, really big hands is Jamal. <laughs> <laughs> and again, the great ones only need one name: Cher, Madonna, Bono. Oh my God. Let's move on. I can't believe I'm blanking on my own players last night. <laughs> Should we take a break and come back? <laughs> oh, boy. This is embarrassing. <laughs> oh, boy. I'm this still is too- plausibly live radio, folks. We're going to take one quick break. One quick we'll break. be back with Mike Arabano and talk about the Austin defense and a little bit more about Jamal. When we return, we'll be back. Hi, this is Mariela and Melina coming to you from Nick's Italian Restaurant where you can come and try one of our house specialties, the Nick's Shrimp, or one of our chicken pistachios. Not in the mood for food? You can also try one of our savory desserts like our homemade tiramisu or cannoli. We're located on FM 1464 just north of Austin High School. Can't dine in? You can call ahead at 346-401-1546 seven days a week from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Or you can hit us on one of the major delivery platforms, Uber, Grubhub, or DoorDash. We look forward to seeing you here at Nick's Italian Restaurant, where our family gets bigger every time you stop by. We're back with the second part of our visit with Mike Arabondola of the Austin Bulldogs, and we want to have some things to celebrate, and one of our great sponsors this year is Nick's Italian Restaurant, just a few hundred yards north of the Austin campus. We want to go there and celebrate some big victories, but you were talking about Jamal Franklin earlier, and you have a chance for some explosive plays on offense, so what kind of defense are the dogs going to put on the field? We're excited about our defense. Uh, more importantly, uh, our, our leading group would be our defensive line with Victor Phillips, uh, with our big nose tackle. Uh, we're excited about, you know, Latana M- MZ will be on one of our defensive ends. We're excited about his play. Um, you know, we're excited about Demarcus Griffin, our, our Mike linebacker. Um, you know, just how big and fast that these guys run around and fly around. Uh, also, Jamal Franklin will be starting that corner, so he'll be a two-way player. Uh, Hugh Rose is a leader for us in the in, in free safety. Uh, so we're just excited about so many of our kids uh, playing different roles and, and even going both ways. Justin Dillard, which is one of our captains as well, will be, you know, our three techniques. So we're excited about, uh, our, you know, just – a lot of defensive players, we feel like our defense is going to be pretty special this year, better than it's been in the past. All right, so anything else that you want to add? Is there any particular theme, maybe uh, some formations that you're going to use on a regular basis? I saw uh, Braden working in the backfield with three pretty large running backs, you know, with, with a lot of power in the running game. And remember, this is web radio, so it's not giving away too much. Well, this is hard for me, right? I mean, this it's the the old coach's tail, right? I mean, you, you don't kiss and tell. So, but it's it's uh, no, we're excited. We have a lot of different formations, like you know, we we've always shown different things offensively. Um, 
Not going to tell what they are, but uh, we'll see a lot of players on both sides playing. Uh, just kind of like what you just said, we'll see a lot of players on both sides playing playing, uh, and helping and having different roles. All right, looking for power from the Bulldogs <laughs> and some, some air raid type passing as well. So looking forward to seeing what your team puts on the field and maybe when we're, we're uh, in November, it may be going for that playoff spot. Hey man, that's the goal. So we're we're excited about the season, and obviously the goal is always to make the playoffs and uh, win district, right? Uh, so um, we're we're excited. Thanks and for covering us. All right, that's Mike Arabonlo. And when we come back, we're going to talk to another coach, Shane Bird of Dulles, who's trying to get his Vikings into the playoffs. And we'll talk to him when we return on the ViFortBend dot com Fort Bend ISD football preview. Get ready. Saving starts with Xfinity. Because when you get Xfinity Internet and Mobile together, you can save up to $400 a year on your wireless bill over AT&T. Enjoy fast, reliable Internet at home and nationwide 5G on the go, included at no extra cost. That means you can connect to everything you love, whether you're a next-level gaming aficionado, an online shopping mastermind, or crushing that research project. So go ahead, stream on all your devices or video chat from anywhere and save hundreds while doing it. Because saving starts with Xfinity. Get Xfinity internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year agreement. Plus, add Xfinity Mobile and ask how to get an eligible 5G phone on us. And for a limited time, $300 back. Don't miss out. Go to Xfinity.com slash start saving. Call 1-800-XFINITY or visit a store today. Internet offer ends 9-30-21 and requires paperless billing and auto pay. Restrictions apply. New performance starter plus internet customers only. Equipment taxes and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Savings based on optimized pricing. Actual savings may vary. Welcome back, and the VibeFortBend.com football preview show continues, and we do know our alphabet. We were going to go Austin, Bush, Clements to start the program, but uh, it became a little bit easier to go to Dulles after we visited with Austin, so we know that D is not the second letter of the alphabet, but the Vikings are really first in line as far as who's been in Fort Bend Public Schools the longest playing sports and and being the flagship high school. Time to talk to Shane Bird, the head coach of the Vikings, and give us a quick overview of how workouts leading up to game one have gone. Yeah, they've uh, they've been good. Um, you know, our, our players are, are eager and excited uh, um, to be back. Obviously, uh, school kicked off last Wednesday. Um, it's good to see students back in the hallways and and uh, and in our, our players getting back on the field. And um, you know, so they've been they've been busting their butt this summer, carrying over into the fall. Um, you know, we really had a big emphasis on, on strength gains in the weight room, and and so they really have attacked that well. And then uh, you know, getting on the field and continuing on with our offensive scheme and defensive schemes and special team install and and um, you know getting after. So we had a good inter squad scrimmage on Saturday. Uh, we just actually watched film today and got that reviewed, and uh, you know, and so we, we're 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 heading the right direction. And there are a whole lot of schools that are seeing uh, changes in the principal's office. For for one, Austin, they had their new principal before last year concluded, but it's the first full year for their new principal. And here at Dulles, we have Corey Stewart taking over. And talk about Corey Stewart and, and how he feels about athletics. Oh man, I, I'm really excited about uh, about Corey um, and and what he brings to this campus. He has a servant leadership mindset. He's been at Dulles a a, a, while, a long time and knows our our um, our culture and our climate. Um, and he, he's for all students, all extracurricular activities, um, you know. And and so he's supportive for for all of our our athletics. Um, and, and so, you know, he, he has high expectations for us, um, high expectations in everything uh, at Dulles. And so, man, I, I'm excited for him and, and the leadership that he's going to bring here um, at Dulles. We're talking with Shane Bird, the head coach of the Vikings, and there's going to be a new offensive scheme in large part when your team has the football. How's it going to be different, and which players are you counting on to make it go, get the yards and the points? Yeah, so, you know, we're really 
really excited. Uh, we sat down after last season and just kind of evaluated where we were off offensively, what we had coming back, um, you know, our, our personnel. And so uh, we, we really just got um, needed to do something different. And so we, we wanted to get under center more, become, you know, downhill, run at you type football team uh, with some with some misdirection. And so our coaches and I, we began to, to do some research. Coach Jackson, our offensive coordinator, has done a great job really thinking outside the box and making connections and, uh, you know, and, and, and putting together um, really a, a offense that's based kind of all out of the wing tee misdirection, um, you know, trap, sweep, that sort of thing, play action pass. And so, you know, we're, we're, we're excited. Our kids are excited. They, they've really bought in and done a great job doing that. You know, up front, it's going to start with, with uh, Tyler Clayton, our center, and then Miles Chapman, one of our captains, the, the three-year starter on the offensive line for us. Um, Anthony Garza will be at tight end, another one of our captains that's a junior. In the backfield, you know, we have lots of guys that can run the ball, and that's what we're excited about. We want to be able to get the ball into their hands uh, right away and let them use their skills. And Jalen Brown, Jackson Tilly, Devin Graham, uh, Maxwell Cotton, all uh, are going to be uh, explosive backs in the backfield. And so, you know, we're, uh, we're excited and, um, you know, interested to see how it goes this, this, uh, this first few weeks. Uh, the name Tilly, when I hear it, I think defense. So are you going to have some of your players going both ways possibly? Or do you have – enough guys where you feel like you can put a really solid offense and a really solid defense on the field without having anybody go on both sides of the ball? Yeah, we're, we're, we are going to have to have um, our best players go both ways. You know, Jackson Tilly is one of those guys. He is he's outstanding outside linebacker. Uh, past two years for us and then um, and, and so he is he's going to play some running back he's really owned that um, he's really worked hard this summer to get in shape and be able to, to carry that load and we know you know as coaches we got to do a great job of, of protecting those players that are going to be on both sides of the ball uh, Jalen Brown's another one's all-star corner all district corner for us you know he's going to he's going to get a bunch of carries um, you know so we have we have several guys in that boat but uh, man they're they're they bought into the culture of, of team and, do, and, and, and you know, giving up, <clears throat> or I guess being sacrificial for their family members, for their, for their teammates here, and uh, willing to, uh, to, to go both sides and, and play and gives them more film and gives them more opportunities to have an impact on the game. So they're, you know, they're excited. To have that type of mindset and to do whatever is necessary, sometimes it's really helpful if you can find a quick phrase that everybody can remember and make it your theme. Maybe put it on the t-shirts you wear underneath your shoulder pads. Is there any particular thing that you are repeating time after time among the coaches and the players so that they don't forget about all those ideals you just talked about? Yeah, for sure. Our, our number one you know, we core value our number one, our foundation of our program is is family, and we talk about it means forget about me, I love you, and uh, we want our players to really care about their teammates, care about their family members, care about you know their their classmates and teachers, and really have that just love and and concern and compassion, and and which is going to drive them to serve others, which is you know a big part of what of what we teach and want our players to do. So it's on the back of our workout shirts it's on the front of our game day shirts um you know our, our, our players know that and understand it and um, you know that that's really our big thing about getting them to believe um, that it's about loving and, and serving others and i'm impressed with that that will stick with me coach just from this one conversation family means forget about me i love you that's that's a good thing who came up with that um i, I mean i stole that from somebody <laughs> <laughs> several years ago and uh, I knew when I had the chance to become a head coach, that was one thing I really wanted to to, to really teach our players and and, um, and and have as our foundation of our program. And you know, our kids are going to eventually go to school, and and football is going to be done one day, um, and they're going to go on and 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 um, be husbands and dads. And you know, I want them to to be great servant leaders and, and wherever they're at and what they do. And and so I think that that's you know what we're investing in in our players here. 
Well, that's why I like it so much. I mean, I love watching the games. I love seeing teams strive for victory and see teams inspire me by what they do. Maybe they persevere and they, they do something that was not expected. But really what's more important and just it's, it's so beautiful is I know that high school sports make these young men and young women who play them better adults when they are no longer playing the game. For sure, and uh, you know, I mean, that, that's 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 why we're here. That's what we do. Uh, we we love to uh, to make an impact on on the students. Somebody, uh, most coaches, some coach in their life has impacted them and has inspired them to go on and to do that um, in in the in the school system and to teach classes and to coach and to just invest in people. And so, you know, again, that's what we're trying to do here. And um, it's it's been neat to see our players really really buy into that another year of district 26a in the current alignment eight teams and four of them will get to the playoffs and good luck coach shane bird maybe the vikings can be one of those that can get into the second week of november yes i mean that's that's the goal we talked about that with our players recently that uh you know that we want to we want to get in to the playoffs, obviously we want to win a district championship, um, but but getting the playoffs, but you know, but then it comes back to just getting better one day at a time, giving your best and improving every single day, and then uh, some of you'll get a chance to put yourself in that position to to uh, reach your goals. All right, we'll be back and we'll talk with Bobby Darnell of Clements, and his team will butt heads with the Vikings when district play starts. You're listening to VipeFortBend.com. You remember their first steps, first time they rode a bike without training wheels, first school dance, and now first year they're driving to school. First Tower and Auto is a family business and they remember all those first two. There's a store just minutes away from your house or the school, so be the first to claim your discounts on oil changes and more. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com. First Tower and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Welcome back to our Fort Bend ISD football preview show, and it's time to talk to Bobby Darnell, head coach of the Clements Rangers. And, uh, boy, coach, it is good to have a season ahead of us where we don't anticipate any interruptions, knock on wood. But was there anything that has happened over the last year and a half that in the adverse circumstances may have enabled you to do something to help grow the program and the culture that you want here at Clements? Uh, I would say that last year kind of made us really focus on those little things, um, being very meticulous about every detail when it just came to keeping us all safe, when it came to keeping everybody healthy and, and just trying to, you know, whether it was the hand sanitizing and washing our hands off and not touching your face, um, just doing all those little things that can possibly help, that's that's what we try to do, socially distance. So that kind of led into off-season where we were still focusing on those little things uh, that gave us a loss by one, by six, and by seven, those little things. So uh, we focused on that all off-season, all into the summer and the last two weeks. Um, we want to be tougher than everybody that we play, and, and that's something that we've really tried to, to hone in on. Well, I know that there are a lot of players you can talk about who are – Who, by the way, is this a good time to take a commercial break since the phone just rang? We could do that. I think we're good. All right. We'll keep on going. Thank you very much, Coach Darnell. So I know there are a lot of players that you want to talk about who, whose good performances are keys to success for the Rangers in 2021. But let's start with your boys. You have very talented sons who are going to be a big part of the picture and the Clements Rangers this year. You know, Micah and Marcus, um, you know, we're in a season of lasts coming up. Um, you know, last picture day today, uh, last scrimmage two days ago. Um, so every day I think is going to be very, very special. Um, we're excited to see what uh, Micah can do with all the full reps. Um, obviously, as a head coach, you want to be prepared for anything. And we will have other younger co quarterbacks get some reps. But um, he's got the reins. So we're going to see what he can do. Obviously, he's got a very familiar uh, and and favorite target, um, really the only returning receiver coming back, um, leading receiver uh, in Marcus. So uh, I, I feel like their chemistry is um, 
very <laughs> uncommon. So um, we're excited to, to see what they can do, have a good season, just, just really soak it in because uh, it's truly special. And how about a quick shout-out for your daughter, who is an outstanding basketball player? Basketball and softball, yeah, definitely. Um, she Maddox is a, a phenomenal athlete herself, phenomenal person, a uh, very strong young woman, and, and we're excited about getting her uh, to, to wherever she wants to go. But she'll be around for two more years, thankfully. All right, I'm sorry. I should have said athlete and been more inclusive. So instead of just honing in on the basketball, I am in no way uh, – dismissing her talents in softball. So who else besides your sons are going to be some of those players that that really help Clements get over the top and contend for a playoff spot this year? Well, I think you got to start with Patrick Smith. Um, his dynamic ability in all three phases of the game is going to help us out um, immensely, uh, being a, a deep threat or just anything offensively, uh, being able to be a safety that can come downhill or cover over the top and ball hawk, um, and then obviously obviously his skills in the return game. So we're excited about what Patrick can do. Um, we're excited about what Nathan Morris can do on the offensive line, leading a group that has four returners um, in Lex Damaris and Carson Talley and uh, Brian Navarro. Um, so we're excited about what, what those guys can do. Um, you know, more defensively, uh, Matt McGinnis and Ferris Rafai at the inside linebacker position. I, I think we're excited to see what they can do sideline to sideline, both being uh, very active, very strong, um, and, and just headsy players. Very smart coaches on the field type guys. So uh, that coupled with you know some guys that are uh, that you may not know about, um, it's going to be fun. And as I recall, Patrick Smith is old number seven, right? That is correct, seven. I would like to see the backside of his jersey running away from defenders. That would be very exciting. I'd like to just see him on the field doing anything with the ball or trying to get the ball. All right, so in the pre-district schedule, what are some of the things that you want to accomplish, and are they good matchups for you as you prepare for district play? Absolutely, um, they're they're great matchups for us. They're they're historically, you know, great Houston teams uh, as far as Pasadena High, Westbury, Terry. Um, you know, those are teams that you always hear about. You hear about their toughness. Uh, so we want to be able to s stack ourselves up against that. Um, you know, give people time and give them. Um, evaluations and, and see where we can go from there when we get in the district leading to Dulles. All right. That'll that that'll pretty much do it for our visit with you on our preview show. Is there anything else that you wanted to tell our listeners that I didn't give you a chance to say? Uh, we're just excited. We're really excited to take another step forward. You know, this is year six for me. Um, so I, I, we've I've assembled, I think, the best coaching staff uh, that we can possibly get. Uh, our kids know them. They, they gel with them. Uh, we have a good time. You know, we spend a lot of time with other people's children. So, you know, we ourselves have got to be able to gel as a coaching staff. And I think that's what we're doing and what we've been doing. Um, so we're ready to go. Uh, it's, it's been a while. It's been a while to get to this point with so much going on over the last 12 months, 18 months. So uh, to really just be in the building, playing football, the, the normalcy is here. Let's go do something with it. Well, you know, from my perspective, and this is one of the reasons I like to be involved in this, there's just, there aren't many things in this life that are better and more worthwhile than the interscholastic athletic experience. Thanks for being such a leader. I appreciate it. Um, I just, I'm, I'm very fortunate for this opportunity, and I don't take it lightly at all. All right, we'll be back. Thanks, Bobby Darnell. And we will continue with our football preview show here on VibeFortBend.com right after this. Hello, fans. This is Bradley Stavenaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth-generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local, hometown, trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, we shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. <laughs> You are the master of the multitask, the champion of making it happen. Taking care of business is not for the faint of heart. Still, you take care of it. Taking care of business. But who takes care of you? Office Depot Office Max. We supply you, copy you 
and tune you up. Members get 2% back in rewards on everything, and we mean everything. We take care of you, so you can take care of business. Office Depot, Office Max. Taking care of business. Welcome back. Our VipeFortBend.com Class 6A football preview continues, and it's time to talk with Alan Aldridge, head coach of the Bush Broncos. He was a Super Bowl champion with the Denver Broncos, and, you know, it's been great, Coach, for everybody to have a semi-normal or pretty normal uh, training camp in August. How has yours been going with the Broncos? Uh, it's been going pretty good. i um, glad to get all the kids back. Uh, we're still... Excuse me, that's my bell. We're still receiving a lot of kids, um, and we're still missing some, but it's good. The kids are excited about you know getting back to football, and we're just excited about the season. It seems like whenever District 26A gets together, there's a dog fight for that fourth playoff spot. Do you see your team as one that will be fighting for that spot, or do you think that maybe you were going to be above that fourth spot, possibly? All we're trying to do is we're going to take it one game at a time. That's all we've really been preaching. So we're definitely trying to get one of those four spots, and, and the guys are working extremely hard. Like you said before, this is a very tough district, you know, to, to get those one of those top four spots, and there's going to be some great competition throughout the season. But we're definitely trying to get one of those four spots. So who are some of the guys that have to come through and make big contributions and make plays on a regular basis for your team to be successful and get into the postseason? Uh, well, we talk, you know, defensively. Uh, we're known as a kind of a defensive school, I guess, because I play defense. So <laughs> I'm thinking that's why. Uh, I have a very good defensive coordinator uh, and coach, J.B. and Thornton. He's been with me since the beginning. So, you know, we're a very attacking defense, and we're going to rely on those linebackers. Uh, Preston Davis and Brandon Chambers are two linebackers that are going to lead the way. And then we have outstanding shutdown corner. Um, and D'Antonio Hackworth that's uh, really had a good summer, had a great year last year. We're look, definitely looking for big things out of him. And we'll have a nice rotation at, at defensive line. And we have a junior, uh, Kosey Okafor, uh, that had an outstanding sophomore season. And we're expecting big things out of him. And, you know, ended up with secondary uh, with Paul Mordia. Uh, we're looking for big things out of him also at the free safety position. Offensively, um, you know, we were very young offensively last last year, but those guys are coming back. Uh, all of those guys are coming back. Our quarterback is coming back. He got a year under his belt with experience, and he was able to work with those guys this summer, you know, to improve on our passing game. And, you know, no, it's no secret that we're going to rely on the running game. We have three great running backs, and Donovan Nixon, uh, Nel, uh, Nelvins Borgella, he'll start it off, and and obviously Adrian Cormier, he'll be all over the field. He'll play some Wildcat receiver um, and uh, and running back for us. And so we're going to rely on those guys to, you know, run the rock, and hopefully we can pound it all the way to the fourth quarter. You know, when you describe an offense that way, it kind of reminds me of the way that Kempner has been for at least a decade, you know, running the ball nearly all the time. And when they do run a play-action pass, the defense always looks surprised. So there were times when uh, Coach Andrus at Kempner would say, if we throw it more than five times, something's wrong with the, with what we're doing. <laughs> would you say the same thing about the Broncos, the way you rely on the run game? I don't think we'll be that extreme, but it, it'll be close. Uh, like I said before, we're going to rely on that. We're going to rely on the run. You know, we're going to try to get it. No, no matter what happens, we're going to run the ball. But you know, our receivers have really stepped up this year. So we have some really great receivers. And Michael Mordia, uh, he's our speedster on the outside. We have a, a sophomore, Aaron Valentine, that's going to be very good for us. And and like I said, Adrian Cormier and even my son, uh, Alan Aldridge the third, he'll he'll be at a slot receiver position, but he's mainly an H-back, fullback type of guy. Uh, but he will get out, you know, in passing situations also. And we have a very good rotation with uh, Jamon Cooley uh, will come in and uh, Kevin Garcia, you know. So we, we, we have a lot of guys that can make some big plays. So, you know, we, we're going we're gonna to run to be able to pass and pass to be able to run. But we primarily want to run the ball and see if we can get out of that. 
All right, Coach Aldridge, it's always great to visit with you and something I want to do next summer. I want to do a series of summer Zoom programs that we can put on our website, and I'm going to call them Pro Jock Jeans because we sure have a lot of people throughout Fort Bend ISD, not just uh, boys but also girl athletes whose parents have been professional athletes. And uh, so that's always good to have especially when you can uh, show off the Super Bowl ring. And, and Coach uh, Javian Thornton, I have to say, he's, uh, he's produced some really good athletic offspring, wouldn't you say? Yeah, of course, of course, without without a doubt. And, and Coach Thornton has been, he's been my right-hand man, you know, especially running that defense. And everybody knows that we're in the attacking defense, and he does a great job. And, uh, you know, <laughs> he has a he has a son that graduated. He has another son that's coming. He's in the eighth grade. He's about 6'1". Uh, his daughter's here playing volleyball for us. So, uh, you know, Coach Thornton is a great coach, and, you know, I really don't know where I would be without him. All right, Coach Aldridge, we will see you on the floor of Hall Stadium. We'll be broadcasting your Friday game against Hightower, and it's the debut of Cornelius Anthony with the Hurricanes, and can't wait to see it down there, and we'll go on the air at 645 Friday. Okay, thanks for having me. All right, we'll continue with our VibeFortBend.com Class 6A preview right after this break. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Are you ready? Ready for anything. For what life throws at you? At your kids. Are they ready to study, research, write papers? To do all the amazing things they don't even know they're capable of yet. Internet Essentials from Comcast brings affordable, high-speed internet to your home for only $9.95 a month. Now available to low-income households eligible for public assistance programs like Medicaid, the National School Lunch Program, SNAP, Housing Assistance, and others. Visit internetessentials.com to apply. No credit check, contract, or installation fee. Taxes, extra restrictions apply. Welcome back to our Class 6A football preview. Fort Bend ISD football will get underway the week of Thursday the 26th of August and then Friday the 28th and more games on Saturday the 29th. It's time to talk to Dennis Brantley of the Elkins Knights. And um, we don't want to dwell on the way last year ended. You did make the playoffs, but you didn't have a playoff game because of you know the the virus thing but uh what do you have on the table that will make your team a contender in 2021 i think that um defensively we're very strong uh offensively we have some bigger backs and some bigger linemen so uh and we always have good receivers so we feel like um, yes we don't have a lot of experience on the offensive line uh, but the size will make up for it. But the defensive line, defensive team, I'm very satisfied and excited about their, what they can do. All right. Uh, before we get back to the offense a little bit, um, I think it's it would be worth it to just kind of talk about uh, the great players that you said goodbye to when the season ended, including Blake Thompson. And you had some, some really great seniors on defense who, who – Sadly for you, won't be back. Yeah, Blake Thompson, he definitely uh, sticks out. He's uh, at Bland Junior College. He made all, uh, I think, second or third team all state uh, honorable mention. I can't remember which one, but he had a great year. Um, and we had some other guys that really, uh, J.B. Young at corner. And I, I, I don't want to think about it too much because I know I'm going to forget someone, but I was really happy with the effort they gave us last year. And, you know, I, even though we didn't play that first round of playoffs, we was a blessing to make the playoffs, but it was probably more a blessing that we didn't play Katie uh, that first round, the way they went through uh, the whole playoff and the state championship just blowing everybody out. Yeah, they were a wrecking machine, and I appreciate you being candid. You know, a lot of coaches wouldn't wouldn't admit that maybe it was just, uh, I guess, discretion's the better part of valor. You know, some some battles you wish you you, you hope you don't have to fight. That's but let's get back to your offense. You know, I'm this is a good problem for you. I'm kind of having difficulty figuring out who is a better athlete, Skyler Fields 
or Jackson Fields, even though his big sister keeps moving up in the world of volleyball and doing very well at UT. You got Jackson Fields. There's almost nothing he can't do on a football field or a basketball court. What does he do for you? Well, he's um, he's a threat every time you go on the field. One, he's six foot seven. Uh, he's a lot faster than people think. You know, he, this kid then ran a four six. Um, so, you know, of course, he has offers in football. He's got offers in basketball. So I'm very excited about him. And, uh, of course, there's that, that, that sibling rivalry. And I'm not going to say who's a better athlete, but I'll just tell him always, you got to prove yourself because your sister has already done so. So how about someone to deliver the ball to him? Are you set on a quarterback? Do you have contenders for it or what? Yes, we have a very good quarterback. Uh, Isaiah Smith came in as a sophomore last year and saved the season for us. Um, uh, he had a great summer, 7-on-7. Seven seven. Uh, he's definitely a leader. And uh, the good thing about him, we'll have him his junior year and senior year, which will give him a three-year starter. Uh, but he is he's probably just as good as any quarterback I have. Uh, had ex- with the ex- you know, he still had to prove himself compared to Jonathan Giles and Cameron George, but he's got that level that he can get to. Well, I remember the way you kind of just threw him into the fire when things weren't really going that well for you offensively, and he really did co- provide a spark. Yes. And what are some of the things specifically that he is going to do better as a junior than he did as a sophomore? He has more command of the offense. He's, he's more accurate more confident. He was probably going to run him a little bit more because, you know, we already know he could run, uh, but he put a lot of some muscle tissue on uh, this summer. Uh, so uh, last year I limited him, limit him to certain things, not this year. All right. So what are some of the other things? You know, you talked about you had bigger linemen this year. I know there aren't any more Matthews boys, <laughs> but, but I'm sure you have some quality up front that will enable you to just really kind of drop the hammer on the opposition when you really need to pound them with the running game. So who's up front who can really open up holes for you? Well, we've got Benjamin Fight, We've got Armand Owens, DeAndre Pittman. we got uh, Samuel Grantham. Uh, just those four guys I named. We've got Kendron Moore, who's uh, – and then we have uh, Noah Tristan. And so – Four of those guys are well over 300 pounds. Um, so I feel pretty good about them, um, uh, about the size. Like I said, they're, they're not a lot of experience, but you can't teach size. You know, that kind of sounds like the, the what they call the Great Wall of Dallas in the 90s, that great offensive line. So you got 300-pounders as long as they can fire out pretty well. I think you're going to be in good shape. Me too, and uh, like I told him, I'm counting on him. I I put the pressure on him. Said I'm counting on you guys. We're gonna go as you guys go, uh, with the size you have. You know, all you gotta do is get in shape and stay in the weight room, and and things will take care of themselves. All right, that's Dennis Brantley, head coach of the Elkins Knights. And um, are there any predictions or prophecies that you want to share that I didn't really give you a chance to talk about in this little visit? Well, I'm not going to ever give my hand, but we just pray to get to the playoffs. And, and, and that would be a, a, a successful season for us. All right, thank you very much. Always good to talk to you, and I remember you from way back when, when you were the best in Texas at the high hurdles, and uh, probably still are, at least in your age group. I think so. (laughs) All right, we'll be back with more. This is VibeFortBend.com. The preview continues as we roll on. Hi, this is Mariela and Melina coming to you from Nick's Italian Restaurant where you can come and try one of our house specialties, the Nick's Shrimp or one of our chicken pistachios. Not in the mood for food? You can also try one of our savory desserts like our homemade tiramisu or cannoli. We're located on FM 1464 just north of Austin High School. Can't sign in? You can call ahead at 346-401-1546 seven days a week from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Or you can hit us on one of the major delivery platforms, Uber, Grubhub, or DoorDash. We look forward to seeing you here at Nick's Italian Restaurant, where our family gets bigger every time you stop by. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. 
Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Welcome back to our Class 6A football preview on VipeFortBend.com. And it's been a pretty good preseason for the Ridgepoint Panthers. It's time to talk to Rick LeFavors, their head coach. And, you know, last season was fantastic. You have quite a few proven players who are coming back. How did your team look in scrimmages? And uh, you think there's good reason for cautious optimism? <laughs> yes, sir. I'm I, uh, very pleased with where we're at in the process. You know, obviously we're got a lot to still clean up, but I felt like we performed well uh, in our scrimmage the other night against Katie Taylor, against a very good you know football team, a playoff uh, caliber team, and um, came out healthy. That was the most important thing. And you know, now like I told our kids, we just got to make sure that we get better between you know that scrimmage Thursday night and and when we play uh, open the season up against Paraline Friday. And almost always, Katie Taylor will have a big physical offensive line. But I believe I heard you telling someone that. As good as Katie Taylor is, the three pre-district opponents that you're going to have are give you going to give you a tougher test in each case, I think, including not only Pearland but also C.E. King and Dickinson. Yeah, you know, and take it for what it's worth, you know, what the preseason rankings are, but uh, C.E. King and, and Dickinson are are all, you know, both uh, considered top 10, and, and I think Katie Taylor's, you know, top 15 uh, as well, so... All, all four opponents in Pearland too. Pearland's uh, top, I think, top 15 as well. So all, you know, from the scrimmage to our first three uh, non-conference uh, opponents are are uh, definitely a formidable test. All of them are playoff teams, and and so it'll give us a great litmus test heading into district and kind of you know what we need to get ready for as we, as hopefully we head into postseason uh, as well. And you've got a talented offensive line. Your son is a part of it. So talk about what's good about the Ridgepoint offensive line. And uh, are they better at protecting the passer? Are they better at blowing open holes for the run game? Or are they equally good at both? Well, um Really, right now, I think we're, the run game's our strength. We're still, uh, you know, because we, we we lost. My, my son was a senior last year. We lost. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot about that. <laughs> he looks so young, just like you. <laughs> yeah. He, uh, but anyway, we had we had to replace three offensive linemen, and so um, you know, the the protection and going against our defense is is uh, every day in practice. Um, you know, our defense throws a lot at uh, at them um, from blitz and and schematics and stuff. So uh, they'll continue to get better. You know, run blocking is definitely their their uh, uh, strength right now. I think we can lean on people. We, we got you know we're, we've got big guards. Uh, we're tall on the ends. You know, six seven uh, on both both tackles, and um, so it's just. But there's some of them are new, you know, and and uh, uh, we just got to continue to get better, and, and and they'll progress each week. And speaking of defenses throwing things at your offense, you've had B.J. Emanuel play a full season in 2020 after getting quite a few snaps during the 2019 season and assess his progress going into this his final season he's just uh he he has it you know just whatever the it factor is um just a tremendous leader um ha- commands the offense and, and the respect uh kids look to him he's kind of our our, our lighthouse if you will he's a, he's calm you know and poised uh and and just a playmaker uh, and he does things great on and off the field that's what's what's awesome about him but having him a year under uh, in the system and, and a year under his belt there's so much more confidence and command of the offense and uh you know last year i think george ranch was kind of the the turning point for him and then you know the, throughout the playoffs he, he definitely uh emerged and led us and um he's in my mind in that form right now so we're, we're ahead of the game with him and i look forward to to watching him you know have a great senior season and on defense, I, I think you, you always seem to have good numbers, plenty of players who are agile and can hit hard. What are the hallmarks of your defense going into 2021? Uh, well, first of all, our D-line's, I think, really good. Um, we're big up front, um, and, and uh, you know, a couple of guys are 300-pounders, and then we, we also have speed as well uh, that are undersized but very quick. But 
overall, we, we just our te- team speed on defense. Um, we're, we're very athletic and very fast and, and you know, what I, th- I would think swarming, if you will. And uh, I think that's going to be a strength for us um, in, in being able to run to the ball and, and chase things down. All right. Well, thank you for last year. It was very exciting, especially in the postseason. That Atascacita game, your team really broke out and played so brilliantly. And uh, maybe even go a step or two farther this year. Good luck this year, well, Coach LaFavors. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. That's the Ridge Point picture, and we'll be back and talk with Trey Sissom of Travis to wrap up our program right after this. You're listening to VibeFortBend.com. Get ready. Saving starts with Xfinity. Because when you get Xfinity Internet and Mobile together, you can save up to $400 a year on your wireless bill over AT&T. Enjoy fast, reliable internet at home and nationwide 5G on the go, included at no extra cost. That means you can connect to everything you love, whether you're a next-level gaming aficionado, an online shopping mastermind, or crushing that research project. So go ahead, stream on all your devices or video chat from anywhere and save hundreds while doing it. Because saving starts with Xfinity. Get Xfinity internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year agreement. Plus, add Xfinity Mobile and ask how to get an eligible 5G phone on us. And for a limited time, $300 back. Don't miss out. Go to Xfinity.com slash start saving. Call 1-800-XFINITY or visit a store today. Internet offer ends 9-30-21 and requires paperless billing and auto pay. Restrictions apply. New performance starter plus internet customers only. Equipment taxes and fees extra and subject to change. After term, regular rates apply. Savings based on optimized pricing. Actual savings may vary. You remember their first steps, first time they rode a bike without training wheels, first school dance, and now first year they're driving to school. First Tower and Auto is a family business and they remember all those first two. There's a store just minutes away from your house or the school, so be the first to claim your discounts on oil changes and more. Head to the website firsttireandauto.com. First Tower and Automotive, a proud sponsor of Fort Bend Vibe Sports. Make your appointment today at any of the four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. All four stores open on Saturday. Firsttireandauto.com. Hello, fans. This is Bradley Stavenaugh with Needville Insurance. We know Fort Bend County. I'm a fourth generation resident of Fort Bend. I'm your local, hometown, trusted agent. With over 30 carriers and nine auto insurance carriers, We shop the insurance for you. We know insurance is hard. We know it's complicated. We make it easy for you. We have Spanish speakers here available for you. Call us at 979-793-7411 or needvilleinsurance.com. Once again, call us 979-793-7411. Welcome back to the Fort Bend ISD football preview show on VitefortBend.com. Now it's time to visit with Trey Sissom, head coach of the Travis Tigers. And Coach Sissom, every year it seems like it's either you or it's Ridge Point 1 and 2. A couple of years ago you had the undefeated regular season. And so Ridge Point recaptured the crown. What do you see and do you still see kind of a, a close 1-2 race and maybe George Ranch sneaking in there. What do you see? Well, definitely, uh, you know, we think that we have a chance of uh, competing for a district title. That's our goal at the beginning of every season. Um, I don't ever want to discount anybody in our district because every game that we play is going to be a tough one no matter who we're playing. But um, I think with the kids coming back and, and knowing what uh, how the district lays out, uh, I think that, uh, you know, if we can get to that Week 11 game against Ridge Point and have a chance to win a district title, that'll be a pretty good season going in. Yeah, I think we'll be – broadcasting that one. I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen. So um, let me just tell you this. I don't think anyone in Fort Bend ISD would mind me saying this, at least among the 6A teams. Travis is always, it seems like, the most fun to watch. You've got prolific offenses. You've had great names like Amron Jeffrey and Parker Washington and Eric Rodriguez over the years. Who are the guys that might produce some eye-popping highlights and some eye-popping numbers in this 2021 season? Yeah, well, you just named a few guys that have, you know, really set the bar pretty high for some of our kids that we have coming back. But uh, we're excited about the kids that we have. Uh, Anthony uh, Njoku is our quarterback. He was Offensive Player of the Year last year. He's coming back uh, to kind of lead our offense, um, and he's got a great group of receivers around him. Uh, you know, we've uh, we've had some kids that have gone on to play at, at the big time level, and uh, having uh, having that uh, having that kind of experience uh, is something we don't have a lot of this year. But the kids we have in Robert uh, Sims and Gabe Van. Wick 
quick. Um, those are two of the guys that we have playing outside that we hope can be some playmakers for us. And, and when it really comes down to it, we're going to have to be good up front. And that's, uh, that's really where the, the, where the wins and losses are going to come in, uh, in Fort Ben ISD. I believe about this time last year I was asking and you said, you know, if we're going to get a lot of wins, we're going to do it with some unproven people. So I guess it's still a fairly young team. Yeah, we are. Uh, you know, we've got some kids that are coming back in some key spots. Most of our kids that, that are on offense or defense uh, have varsity experience. They just weren't starters last year. We had a great senior group last year that uh, graduated a lot of really, really good football players. So, uh, you know, having spring ball was huge. Uh, that was obviously a, a, a big thing for us to get some guys some reps. And then summer was has been good. And then even fall camp we've uh even though we've had our lightning delays and we've been in the cafeteria and we've been in the gyms and everywhere sometimes but the uh but a new turf uh, practice field uh we've gotten a lot of experience uh just going into our scrimmage at, uh, against uh you know that we we think we're going to be pretty good and you mentioned that new turf practice field the bond issue has been a great blessing to a lot of uh, schools across the district and they've been able to stay on the field and practice and as long as lightning doesn't drive them indoors like it has so many times. Um, there's something I, I just want to revisit, not so much with the question, but just uh, uh, saying I'm thankful. You know, sometimes we pray for a blessing. We pray that God will get us out of something and and then he does. And sometimes we forget to keep saying thank you. But I am very grateful, happy to see you here, healthy. Um, it looks like your health issues of a few years ago are just a memory. Am I right? Well, you, you, you hit the nail on the head. God's blessed me uh, with not, not just healing, but uh, he's blessed me with a great attitude and a, a great group of people around me. Um, I'm still ha I still have to fight my, uh, my cancer every day. Uh, it's not something I'm, I'm ever going to get uh, get away from. Uh, but the uh, the doctors and the treatment that I have, and the support of my wife and my kids, and then obviously my coaching staff and my my, my I guess you would say the Travis family has been huge. And uh, I get up every morning. I'm thankful for getting to do what I get to do, and uh, I get to come to work. And it's really not really a job because I mean I'm coming up here to play a game. And uh, you know there's a lot there's a lot more things that you could be doing that are not as fun as what I get to do. But I'm definitely thankful that God's given me this opportunity. Well, there are some images that you see and you'll never want to unsee them. Of course, it was because of an unpleasant situation. But I remember those big red solo cups that were jammed in the fence that spelled out pray for Trey and I will never forget it. And it was a unifying thing, not just the Travis family, but everyone in Fort Mend ISD pulling together and showing their support. Yeah, and I think that's, you know, when you look across the across Fort Bend, uh, whether it's Ridgepoint or Hightower or Marshall uh, or, or even our closest uh, school, you know, whether it's Austin or Bush, you know, we're all one big family. Um, and and what, what affects one really affects all of us. And, um, you know, I can look back on those. It's been it's amazing to think that's been three years now. Um, and and it's it's kind of one of those deals where you don't really know how special things are until something tough like that happens. And it really, you know, kind of brought a light to how special being in Fort Bend is and how great the people are and how uh, and how everybody as a community can kind of rally behind you and and uh, you never can put a, a price tag on that that's something that um, that's really special and that's you know that's what's great about being in Fort Bend and one more question that I want to ask you about what will happen inside the lines this year it seems like over the years you've had some great kickers Sergio Rubio really distinguished himself and I believe he has graduated but I believe he has a little brother is his little brother going to be your kicker. Yep, you know, Antonio has come out for us. Uh, he played for us last year as well, um, and we're very fortunate because he plays uh, plays soccer, um, and uh, he's been doing that kind of as a, I guess what you would say, as a semi-professional with the, with the Dynamo and some of those teams that um, have high school kids on it. So he wasn't able to play uh, football or even soccer for us the last couple of years. And then last year, due to COVID, they shut their academy down, and he, was, uh, he had the opportunity to come out and kick for us, and he's done a heck of a job. Um, you know, we're excited. Excited about him coming back. I mean, it, it's kind of it's kind of crazy to think uh, it's kind of like quarterbacks around here. I've only had a couple of quarterbacks over the last seven years. Well, I've only had a couple of kickers too. Going back, you know, uh, Garrett Urban was yeah. one of ours. So Garrett, uh, he's been kicking up at Grambling for the last four years, and now Sergio has been kicking since he was a freshman. He graduated and he's going off to college now. So Antonio's coming in and he's got some big shoes to fill, but he's doing a heck of a job. And we have another kid that's uh, that's recently come back out. He had left us and uh, um, is back. 
back at Travis now, uh, you know, Xander Trevino is another kid that we have that's going to help with punting duties as well. So we, uh, you know, special teams are big for us. We, we kind of hang our hat on the offensive side and we like to score a lot of points. I said, but, uh, you know, when you, when you score touchdowns, you got to have a, a PAT also. And then you got to have a kickoff after that. So uh, <laughs> those guys uh, play a big role for us for sure. Well, I will say, not necessarily. I've been watching Marshall. I don't think they've kicked an extra point. It's, it's been four or five years, maybe, since they've kicked an extra point. They never seem to worry about it, and it doesn't seem to cost them too much. Great to visit with you, and we'll talk to you in our Countdown to Kickoff shows. And we're going to do, as always, many Travis broadcasts throughout the year. We thank you, Roger. And like I say, it's always great to uh, to kind of highlight not just Travis, but Fort Bend. And we appreciate the job y'all do and, and being able to reach out to all the people around. Uh, it's a, truly a blessing, and we really do appreciate it. All right, that is a wrap. That will be the last of our uh, 6A coach visits for this preview show. Glad you listened. And remember that on Thursday of this week, we'll start our coverage with the Marshall Buffs taking on Aldine Eisenhower. And then, on, of course, on Saturday night, we will have the Kempner Cougars taking on the Dulles Vikings. And uh, let's see, what is your game? Is a Friday, right? We're actually Thursday. We've bumped it up. But our, Friday, our first game will be Friday next week against spring. We get to go play at the big stadium, uh, Planet Ford, and uh, get our kids under the big light. So uh, we'll see. We're going to take on a heck of a team up there in spring and Coach Miller. So we're going to have our hands full week one all the way through to week 11 against Ridge Point. Okay, well, I am uh, tempted to say we're dealing, but we are married to Archer Volkswagen, baby. They are, they are sponsoring us all year long, so go get yourself a fine new vehicle at Archer Volkswagen. Sell them their car, too. They're, they're anxious to hear about that if you want to make a trade. Okay, we're done. Thank you so much, and uh, enjoy the football season, everybody.